Okay. Hudson in California. This is your President Andy. Andy 2 FCC. Let's start it on here. This is a neat little radio. I only have one complaint about these little radios. Power cable is permanently attached. I do offer the option to install Anderson power poles. Uh, the 35 amp Anderson power poles in the cable here, right at the radio, so that You can disconnect the power cable if you run it in your car and hide the cable where you don't want nobody else to see it. And you want to take the radio out for some reason. If you have no way to disconnect it, then you're pretty much stuck. But I can install a set of these guys on there. Okay. And... Just simply, you just have to disconnect it when you go to take it out. I, I definitely recommend that option on these. And also, the fuse is close to the radio, not close to the power source. So if you put that jack in there, if I put it in there for you, I turn that cable around and put the fuse on the power source end. So if the wire shorts out anywhere along the way going to the battery or the accessory connection it blows the fuse instead of catching the wire on fire and burning your car to the ground that's just my two cents but I highly recommend that Good. I'm sure you guys have have heard the horror stories I hear it quite often with amplifiers, especially the Texas Stars where the fuse is built into the amplifier. That's that's really bad way to do it. Now if you put a fuse on the battery end and one at the amplifier, that's that's good. That's that's extra protection. That that doesn't hurt anything. But you definitely want your fuse close to the battery. So that if that wire shorts out anywhere along the path, it blows the fuse at the battery instead of melting down the wire and causing a fire in your vehicle. My personal opinion, that's what I recommend. Makes sense? I'm sure most of you will agree that it does. Okay. We're going to try this little guy out, make sure everything is working before we crack it open. One thing I do like about these little radios, 4-pin, standard 4-pin microphone.
Now, I hate that, but I think you can turn that off. And of course, most of the functions are menu driven, like they are on all these new radios. Well, it may not be on this one. I think here it's a combination of of uh, God, I hate that. And the volume's all the way down too. Okay. Dead key in about five watts, actually. Hello, test, test one, two, one, two, test. Got pretty good forward movement. This one also has weather. works okay you also have a uh, 5 volt 2.1 out USB connection on the front of the radio you can use to charge your phone with that's handy and this is a 12 or 24 volt radio that's what it looks like it's a nice looking little radio I mean I really like what Publix has done, but Publix, wow, got Publix on the brain. I really like what President has done with the way these little radios look. Okay, let's crack it open and do the upgrades to it. If any of you guys wanted the old Andy, they're no longer available. They've been replaced by the Andy 2. Which I really don't see much difference between the two. Well, matter of fact, I don't see any difference between the two. They look the same. They act the same. first thing you notice when you get into one of these radios is there is no adjustments. You gonna see in there? No adjustments whatsoever. No tuning coils. There might be tuning coils under these. But there's no uh, potentiometers to adjust. The bias is preset. I can't do anything with that. The only thing I can do is change the filtering and give us a little more capacitance on the DC input buffers. 
And what they did with these back here is they put two 220 microfarad caps instead of the normal 470 they put in there. And they did that so they could put 25 volt caps in there because it's a 12 or 24 volt radio. Good heat sink over here for the voltage regulator. But that's about it. You know, I can change this filter. Well, let's see. What value is this filter? This is a... This is a... Wow, that's hard to read. This is a 09. Okay, so that's a 9 kilohertz wide filter. Channels are spaced 10 kilohertz apart. With this being a 9 kilohertz wide filter, you've got 5 kcs roughly on either side of the center frequency that you can hear. So if somebody goes to a zero on one of the channels in between, you're going to hear them just like they were on the same channel you are. So that's why I like to narrow these up. Cuts down on some of the bleed over. They are well made. They're very well made. They're made by Quasang. Uh, the same people who do the the uh, any tones and the uh, President Lincoln too. And they finally changed it to where it says President there now instead of any tone on the on the twos. But very good construction. Nice thick PC board. Good thick runs on the bottom of it. It's a quality piece. You just can't do a whole hell of a lot with it. Okay, so I'm looking at underneath these two shields here and here. I'm looking for indications of inductors being in that area underneath these there's there's nothing looks like a couple of capacitors probably an inductor fixed inductor in there and that's it so that doesn't do us any good all right well get in there and replace these capacitors and let's see there's the power cable coming in there there's the first one and there is the second one It looks like those holes are clean. So they should just fall right out, but they're not going to. Okay. So I'll have to do my usual trick, which is keep both leads up from the bottom at the same time. I heard one of them fall out. Here's the other one. Now I can clean out the holes.
then. Yeah, see. 220 at 35. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There are a couple of 220s at 35 volts. So, what I'm going to do is go back with 2200s at 25 volts. If I can get the leads to go through the holes. Must be a little bit of uncleaned solder in that hole. Or no, I guess maybe the leads are just too big. Well, I can twist that one and get it to go through, but I'm not going to be able to twist both of them and get it to go through. Well, that one just fell right in there. So it seems like it's only the ground hole that I'm having a problem with. So maybe I didn't get it cleaned out enough. Let me go back and try to clean it up a little more. Well, that looks pretty clean. Let's see if I did any good. And I apologize. That was, yeah, that was the, the, the ground hole. Okay. No, it wasn't. That was the positive hole. Okay. That worked. Let's see if I can get this other one in here. Perfect. Okay, so we multiplied both capacitors times 10. We went from 220 microfarad to 2200 microfarad. That's going to give you a little better filtering on your DC line. Okay, which means you'll have smoother DC going to all the components in the radio. And what that means, basically, is less noise. Let's see if I can get this glue off of here pretty easy. It usually doesn't like to come off too easy. Yeah, it's like that. I can get a hunk of it. Yeah, maybe I can get the, that guy out. Something else I don't like about that power wire is it gets in the way. Like when I'm rolling it back and forth on my bench here. All right, let's see if I can get the glue to turn it loose. And there we go. Okay, 
So we're going to be going from a, a single, what is this? A single nine. Can you guys see that? It's hard to see. Going from a single nine to a single 7.5. see that one or not hopefully you can that's an NDK now I only have the 7.5 kilohertz wide filters because I have noticed on radios with FM if I go any tighter down like a, a 6.5 or a 6 that uh, FM sounds kind of muffled FM is frequency modulation which means depending on how much how strong your audio is that you put into it it's going to depend on how much the deviation the frequency modulation how much it moves above and below your center frequency for modulation and if I go any tighter than 7.5 that basically chops that sine wave off before it's completed. So that's why I set all the filters up for 7.5. Okay, and that's it. That's basically all I can do to it right there. There's no adjustment to it. Whatever the output power is, that's what you got. Whatever the modulation is, that's what you got. And they set these up so that they do not exceed FCC specifications. But they are nice little radios. Excellent receiver, as you'll find out. That's one thing they got going for them. Receive on these little guys is great. European models, these do something. That, that gives you different country bands, but on the FCC models, those don't do anything. So don't even try to fool with them. They're, they're there for the other models. They don't do anything for this one. Okay. get back up see what we got the biggest benefit for these little president radios is a receiver you'll see what I'm talking about super sensitive very quiet. Hello, audio hello. 
Hello, audio. It's got a pretty good forward swing. And we're dead keying. I'd say that's five watts, not six. Hello, audio. It goes up, it forward swings to about 18 watts. PEP, that is. Now, RMS, audio, audio. Goes up about a half a watt. But, all right, now let's check the receiver. Switch that to internal. Let's see what our signal strength is. Eh? We got three bars. And that's good on a radio that only has a four bar meter. Mm, you can't see nothing because of the reflection. There we go. All right, that's on channel 20. That's a S9 with three bars there. Okay. All right, let me put the covers back on it. But you can see how small it is. I mean, this tiny little thing. There's my hand. Of course, I got big hands, but my hand almost covers up the radio. That filter is going to help with bleed over. And these capacitors are going to keep your signal up when you're talking and give you better filtering on the DC line. And that's about all I can do to them. Now there are 10 meter radios. They don't. You, you've got adjustments in those. Another thing they've got going for them is the quality of the radio, the quality of the PC board, the parts on the inside. The main thing is the PC board. Very well made. Good thick copper on it.
There's your last com sticker. have this plastic film over the oh see that little corner right there sticking up it's got this plastic film over the display okay move my big old hand out of the way so you can see it all right the microphone that's on this is electric and it will produce more audio than the dynamic microphone i had plugged into it there's a way to change that from electronic or electric to dynamic inside the menu. You'll have to look at the manual to see how to do that. Okay. But there it is. Nice little radio. And like I said, it's tiny, well-made. Only thing I don't like about it is this power cable. You can't disconnect it from the radio. If you have to take the radio out and send it in for service or if you need to... Uh, Take it out of your vehicle to keep somebody from stealing it. If you leave it at the airport, you can't do it. Uh, you know, and I'm saying if you route the wires up through the vehicle to hide them and get them out of the way. Uh, I recommend the, the power, Anderson power poles on here to disconnect that. All right. Nice looking little radio. Hudson, I sure hope you enjoy your new radio. It was my pleasure to set it up for you. 7-3, everybody.